Welcome back to Askewed Reviews, and this week we are continuing the Phantasm series with the 1988 film Phantasm II. Here is your trivia question for today. What does Reggie create in this film that would become his weapon of choice going forward in the series? The answer will be at the end of this video. Our film starts off seven years after the first one, and Mike has now been spending that time in an institution as supposedly the events of the last film did not actually occur. Also, he's gone through some sort of weird puberty which has completely changed him. We find out that Jody apparently did actually die though in a car accident, at least that's what's being said. Reggie, who is now the one taking care of Mike, is under the belief that none of the events that he described actually happened. So Mike tries to do what he can to make Reggie believe, for instance, digging up all the graves in the nearby cemetery, showing that there's no bodies there anymore. Reggie still stays reluctant in believing Mike. That is at least until the tall man blows up his home with his wife and child in it. There's also a new character introduced named Liz, who has some sort of psychic connection with Mike and warns him about the tall man coming to her town soon. So Mike and Reggie arm up, and begin following the trail of devastation that the tall man has left in each and every town that he visits. Along this path, they end up running into a girl named Alchemy, who Reggie ends up having a bit of an interest in. Unfortunately, she definitely is working for the tall man. So will our heroes, Mike, Reggie, and Liz be able to save the day? Or will the tall man be able to enact his plans? Don Coscarelli is once again the writer and director for this film. And while the first movie took some concepts from the book Something Wicked This Way Comes, the second one seems to take some ideas from Salem's Lot. Shirley Coscarelli, who is Dan's mother, suggested an idea of her own as to what the sequel should have been. Her idea was that Mike and Jody's cousin would have come to town to investigate what happened in the first film, and she even had a suggestion of Christy McNichol playing the cousin. Universal really wanted to change things up for this film. In fact, they wanted Coscarelli to recast the characters of both Reggie and Mike. When Coscarelli fought back against this, they came to an agreement that one of the actors could stay after the audition process. So after those auditions, Coscarelli decided to keep Reggie Bannister, which I think was the right choice, as Reggie became such a badass character in this film. It probably also helped that Bannister did almost all of his own stunt work. Here's something that's actually pretty interesting. Reggie Bannister actually quit acting between the first and second films. Now, during that time, he actually was working at a funeral home and assisted in embalmings. A. Michael Baldwin, who played Mike in the first film, dislikes this one so much that he likes to pretend that it actually never happened. This film would also be the first starring role for James LaGrosse, who plays Mike in this movie. LaGrosse wasn't the only possibility to play the new Mike in this film. In fact, Brad Pitt was even up for the role. Sam Raimi, who was friends with Coscarelli and would randomly show up to set sometimes, technically got a little reference in the film, as there is a point where you can see someone's ashes being poured into a bag, and the name on the bag is Mr. Sam Raimi. There's a line in this film delivered by Angus Scrim as the tall man, where he says, You think that when you die, you go to heaven. You come to us. This line and dialogue is actually used in a song written by the band White Zombie. Due to the menacing look and killing properties of the gold sphere that appears in this movie, it was nicknamed on set as Rambo. So when it comes to the film Phantasm II, I don't feel like this movie was any better or really any worse than the last one. There were a couple of things I did like a little bit better, but not enough to really elevate this too much in my review. So I'm also going to give this one a 3 out of 5. Now, as for the trivia question from the beginning of this episode, what does Reggie create in this film that would become his weapon of choice going forward in the series? He creates the quad barrel shotgun. I have no idea if this thing would actually work in real life or if it's just an absolute mess, but come on, you have to admit, it's pretty badass looking. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Askewed Reviews, and if there is a movie you'd like to see get a review, just mention it in the comments.